just going to say a few more things here about participles in respect to uh, areas participle that you've been looking at. Uh, the first thing I really want to say is now if you look at it's really complicated in many ways when you first look at all this, of all the different forms of participles. But after a while, it starts to gel in you because you start to see the connections between other forms that you've already learned. And in this case, if you uh, look at the indicative um, a principal part, say, of Luo, you can see the connection with the participle in terms of its uh, corresponding form. So, um, uh, indicative, present, active, Luo, uh, aorist form, Elusa. You recognize the way to form the aorist here with the augment and the sigma and so forth. I put in the middle and passive um, uh, notion of the aorist, the uh, elusamen, but I'm, I really then want to get to the aorist passive, which is eluthane, with the augment and again in the theta that denotes the uh, aorist passive and so on with its appropriate ending. And then if you look at the uh, aorist, uh, excuse me, the participle endings of the uh, corresponding forms, you'll see the connection that's there. So the uh, um, uh, present participle luo is luone, just connect it then with the indicative active present tense, luo, and so on. The, without the augment in the aorist participle, you take that off, then it's lusas, look at that in respect to lusa. And then the, I've put in again the middle and passive participle there, lusa menos, uh, in, in comparison to elusa main. But again, uh, I want you to look at the uh, aorist ending then of the uh, participle, the aorist passive form. It's uh, luthase, no augment on it, but notice the theta's there, and then you've got the corresponding endings. So you can see that there is a correspondence in respect to the endings of the participles in terms of the um, passing uh, of the principal parts as we work through them. All right, so uh, the second thing I just want to mention then is just to give you um, now a couple of examples of how these participles are used in Aris form uh, with the basic idea just to carry at the, this point of that when a participle appears uh, in uh, a clause because you look for the main verb first of all and if it's an Aris participle we've got to say at this point that it's going to be an activity that occurs before the main verb and I've got a couple of examples. One's from Matthew 14, verse 14. Kai excelthron eden pollen oklon. So now there's your main verb, uh, eden, which is the secondary form from arao. So um, he saw um, pollen oklon. Oklon is a second declension masculine noun, and uh, pollen is a third declension adjective. So he saw, uh, and it's indefinite here, uh, a large or a great crowd. So now before that, now let's put and look at the participle uh, uh, clause that comes before that, uh, chi, and now um, ex uh to what? Elthon, to come or to go, ek, to go out. So it's a secondary form there. Again, don't be fooled by the ending, um, omega nu, thinking that it's uh, a present participle on the fountain of Luo. You can tell because if uh, it, it's a secondary form because you know that the aorist uh, stem, excuse me, the verbal stem of Erkamai is elf. So therefore, this is going to be a secondary form. So uh, it's basically going to be, and, uh, well, let's just translate it literally. And coming, he saw a great crowd. Uh, now, it's, uh, let's translate it now with the participle, the aorist participle, as action occurring before the main verb. And when he came, he, he saw a great crowd. Or when he had come, he saw a great crowd. You see how the aorist participle is used always in conjunction with the main verb. The second example that I've got is from Matthew 21, verse 45. Kai ekusantes hoi akierus kai phariseoi tas parabolas autu egnosen choti peri autun lege. Uh, let's look for the main verb here. Oh, there it is. Look, it's an aorist form again. I'm always looking for the main verb uh, from Ginosko. You probably know this is one of the principal parts. I just I suggest you learn it off um, <clears throat> to uh, to know. I know Ginosko. Here's secondary form. They knew, and then 
Hoti here is not Hoti recidive uh, in respect to uh, opening up quotation marks. This is uh, this is a dependent clause. The, the, he, they knew that he is speaking lege present tense concerning them. Peri um, prepositional phrase uh, third person pronoun uh, genitive masculine singular. He is so he is speaking. They knew he is speaking con about them. Now let's go back and look. Where's the participle? Ah, accusantes. Ah, this is uh, straightforward, so to speak. It's an aorist form of participle from a regular verb, acuo, uh, and it's it's nominative masculine plural. So then it would agree, so to speak, with the subject there, which is the um, uh, the high priests and the Pharisees, or the chief priests. Excuse me, the chief priests and the Pharisees, uh, Archierus, that's third declension noun, Pharisaos, the second declension masculine noun. So therefore the, the um, chief priests and the Pharisees, then what are they doing? They are, let's just t translate it literally, hearing, ah, tara, tas parabolas, uh, parabole, feminine uh, form, um, here, what accusative, um, sig accusative plural? So he, here, and uh, I'm just going to translate it literally at this point. And hearing the chief priests and the Pharisees, the parables of him, his parables, parables of Jesus, they knew that he is speaking about them. Ah, now let's take this principle that we've got. Somebody's just knocked on my door. I'm going to have to hold this for a second. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> well, the Jehovah's Witnesses just knocked on my door, inviting me to a uh, remembrance of uh, Jesus. Uh, they're obviously cashing in on, on uh, Easter and so forth. Uh, <laughs> now, where am I? Um, yes, so <laughs> then back to, we're looking now at how this Aries participle, Acusantis, is activity that occurs before the main verb. So literally, and and hearing the chief priests and Pharisees, his parables, they knew. Oh, so we'll put this, this will be in terms of a temporal clause in respect to a participle. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, activity before the main verb, they knew that he, uh, was speaking about them, or he is speaking about them. All right? And then I just wanted to go back to uh, what I said last week in terms of a couple of examples from there, the same sort of thing in the way that I was introducing to you. Here's another example of a temporal clause. Remember, I listed all those different clauses through which participles uh, uh, achieve their meaning, uh, so to speak. Uh, the one that I gave you from Mark 12:14. Um, el thontes legusen autu, there's your main verb, they said to him, or they are saying to him, and there's the aorist participle, uh, which is put here as a temple clause, uh, uh, aorist participle again, because it's the uh, verbal form of erkamai. When they came, that happened, that occurs before the main verb, they said to him. And the second example that I gave you was from uh, John 20, verse 20, Ekaresen hoi mathetai idontes ton kurion. There's a subject, the disciples, mathetai. Uh, the disciples, uh, uh, there's, there's um, third person plural, aorist active indicative. Um, the disciples, they rejoiced. The disciples rejoiced. Now, uh, idontes, oh, there we go, it's from Arao, it, with this verbal stem, so it's an aorist participle. And it would be here then, so literally, the disciple, they rejoiced, the disciples, seeing the Lord, Kurian, accusative, masculine singular. So the disciples, subject, rejoice, there's your main verb, now, this will be uh, then put this into English. The disciples rejoiced seeing the Lord. It's an activity that occurs before the main verb. So then it's going to be uh, a causal. 
the disciples rejoiced because they had seen the Lord or because they saw the Lord. Better they had seen because they, they saw the Lord before they rejoiced. That was the basis of them rejoicing. And then the third example, as you know, is from that, that famous phrase in um, Philippians 2, 7, from which kenotic theology comes. You know what kenosis is now because you recognize the form that it is, takes as a transliteration from the Greek verb. Here it is. Heaton ekenosin. There it is. Morphein dolu labon. Uh, he emptied himself uh, reflexive uh, pronoun there. He emptied himself, uh, third person, indicative, active, singular. Now, there's Labone. It's not, uh, don't be fooled there again. Don't be, you won't be thinking about that in respect to um, a, a participle form that is present tense because it follows the pattern of luo. Luo and present tense agreed, but this is a verbal form. This is from Lambano and it's lab is the verbal form. So therefore, this is a secondarist form. Ah, so he emptied himself um, a, what? Um, he emptied himself a form of a slave taking. <laughs> That's it literally. Now, put it into a sentence uh, in terms of instrumentality here. I think, as I said, he emptied himself by means of taking the form of a servant. So taking the form of the servant that occurred first, which then led him to emptying himself. And that could be argued in different ways on that, as you can, you'll see, because the, the distinction is fine, very tuned, fine tuned there in respect to what that means in terms of what I'd call temporal and eternal significance of Jesus taking the form of four years. So then the translation of it would be dependent upon other elements from the context. All right, I hope that helps in respect to understanding then the aorist form of adverbial participles. Thanks.